This video is meant to catch both groups up together to be the same point in friction, kind of wrap up our ideas about friction in terms of notes. Uh, this is also going to be combined with a reading that you're gonna be doing of two pages from the textbook, and then answer some questions about that. So we've already figured out that friction is a contact force, right? So it's a contact force, and we said that it tries to prevent or tries to the relative motion of two objects in contact. All right. And so um, it's a fancy way of saying it, it, it tries to prevent objects from sliding past each other. Uh, and then we figured out that there were two types of, of friction, static friction and kinetic friction. So static friction is when the two objects are at rest with respect to each other. And what does this force do? This force uh, tries to prevent the objects from sliding past one another. It holds them at rest with respect to each other. Okay? And we figured out in our discussion that the size of the static frictional force was always enough to exactly cancel out the force or forces attempting to accelerate the object up to a point. If you pull hard enough, doesn't matter what that object is, you will be able to overcome static friction. So there is this value that we called Fs max, and this is the maximum possible value of static friction, right? And so if you overcome Fs max, the object accelerates. And so the question we were posing in class at the end of each of these sections was, what factors affect Fs max? So Fs max was affected by two things. We figured out first, it was affected by the amount objects press together. Okay, that is why more massive things tend to have larger Fs maxes, i.e. they require more uh, force in order to get them going. It's not because they have more mass or weight per se, it's because that that mass or weight causes the, the object to press into the surface a lot. I can actually have the same Fs max with this smaller rock. If I press it into the surface, it becomes just as hard to move as this object just sitting here uh, without me pressing into it, right? So weight is a factor, but it isn't the thing. We said that this is quantified through the normal force, which is why I introduced the force, because the amount that objects press together is the same thing as the normal force. And the second factor is, well, we talked about different surfaces or places where um, uh, it was easy to slip or not slip. And one example that each class came up with was uh, a car on roads that has a lot of friction. It's, it's those, the, this car does not slip over the road very easily, but a car on ice would. So what matters here is um, what are called the textures of the surfaces in contact, okay? Right? For example, this pumice stone is fairly rough, right? And so that's hard to move past my hand. That pumice stone, it's actually easier on this wood surface because the wood is smooth. So it's not just the pumice stone that matters, it's actually the two surfaces together. So skin and pumice would, um, you know, something about it would have a large value here. And what we need to do is put a value to something that talks about the textures of the surfaces in contact. And I'm going to introduce something that's called the coefficient of static friction.
It's a number that we put to like how much friction does, do those textures have? And the symbol for the coefficient of static friction is our friend, the Greek letter M, mu, uh, and then we use a subscript of S. So mu sub S is the way you say it, right? And so if you have very rough surfaces in contact, mu would be really high, right? If you have uh, very smooth surfaces, like uh, this piece of, um, uh, obsidian actually that I got from Iceland which is pretty cool right that has a fairly you know generally with most surfaces a fairly low mu right here on my kitchen table that is a very low mu those slide across each other really easily but if I put my rock on my piece of pumice here that does not slide easily so rock on pumice would have a high mu so tires on a dry road would have a very high mu and dry uh, tires on a um, um, on a wet road or an icy road would have a low mu. So things with low mu would mean uh, they are slippery surfaces in contact. And high mu is generally rough surfaces or sticky surfaces. Because it's not just about roughness, uh, sometimes that adhesion, it also is a, a, a thing as well, right? And once again, it's about both surfaces, right? My example here was the pumice on the table had a low mu. It was quite easy to slide that across, but the pumice on the rock had a high mu. So it's about combinations of surfaces, and that's what's important here. Combo of surfaces, okay? And that actually gets put together in an equation that we're never actually gonna use this equation to calculate this, but just so you can see, mu, uh, rather that the maximum value of static friction is mu sub s times fn. I mean, the higher mu is, the higher this, this barrier is to get something to moving. And the more the surfaces are pressed together, the higher this barrier is as well, right? So notice this is fs max. That's not actually the size of friction. That's just saying how big it could be. So for example, right? If I know Fs max between two surfaces is 100 newtons, right? So if Fs max is 100 newtons, I have this box, and I push with a 60 newton force, because my applied force is less than Fs max, it doesn't move. So what does that mean static friction is? Well, that means that static friction has to be exactly equal to that to cancel it out. So Fs is equal to 60 Newtons. So this is not the value of the frictional force, it's just like the limiting object, right? Uh, as an analogy, if uh, you have $100 in your pocket, that's the maximum amount you can spend. If you uh, see something that's worth $5, you don't pay all $100, you only pay the $5. That's how static friction functions, right? And so that's static friction. So we can increase static friction if we want by pushing things together. We can decrease by maybe like pulling them apart a bit or by changing the textures of the surfaces in contact, uh, making them smoother, less sticky. Sometimes people use things like uh, oils or lubricants, right? Because what those do is actually change the coefficient of static friction between two surfaces. Now, Kinetic friction, which we'll call really sliding friction. The only reason we don't really call it, I introduced it as kinetic friction, is because its symbol is FK. Um, I can't use FS because we're using FS for static friction. That's why I want to use both names. So we figured out a couple of things static, uh, about kinetic friction, that it occurs as two objects slide past each other. We also said that, that the kinetic friction is always opposite the velocity. Not opposite forces, it's opposite velocity. Whereas the static friction is always gonna be opposite the thing that's trying to get it to start moving. The kinetic friction is just opposite the velocity. We're also gonna find, and this is something that we're gonna have to see through experimentation, 
that uh, the value of fk does not depend on the speed of the object. Okay, people think oftentimes that the value of kinetic friction should depend on the speed of the object, that the faster it goes, um, the more kinetic friction. It also doesn't uh, depend upon uh, applied forces. Right? So what does the value of kinetic friction depend upon? Well, it actually depends upon the same two things as, as static friction. The value of FK depends upon how much two surfaces press together. And it depends on, once again, the textures of the surfaces in contact. So this is the same as with static friction. This is the same idea, but it's a little bit different. Because the surfaces in contact are not in continuous contact the way it would be for static friction, um, there is a different coefficient here. It's called the coefficient of kinetic friction. And it's called mu sub k. So I want you to think about an experience of trying to push a really heavy object. Right, so there you are trying to push a really heavy object. I don't know, uh, you know, maybe a table, right? If you think about pushing that table, in order to get the table going versus once you get it going, keep it going, which of those is bigger? Is it harder to get it going or keep it going? Hopefully, what your physical experience says is that it is harder to get it going, right? You have to give that big push initially, and then you don't have to push as hard to keep it going. So what does that mean? Well, to get it going, you have to overcome Fs max. But to keep it going, you just have to overcome fk. So if this is true, that must mean that the maximum value of static friction between two surfaces is greater than the value of the kinetic friction between those surfaces, which means here that um, the value of the coefficient of kinetic friction must be less than the value of the coefficient of static friction. Okay, and That's what we need to know about the concept of friction uh, for our course.